Welcome back, everyone. As you remember, last week we talked about art in the 20th century. Today we're changing topics. I want to talk about art that you won't find in a museum. That's because it's temporary art. Temporary because it's not supposed to last forever, only for a short time. Let's look at my next slide. Can everyone see it? What kind of animal is this? It looks like a dragon. That's right. It's a friendly looking dragon. But this sculpture is not made from something solid like stone. Can you see what it's made from? I think it's snow. It is snow, and it looks like a sunny day. So the sculpture is not going to last. It's snow. So it's going to melt. This snow sculpture is part of a winter festival in Montreal, Canada. And sculptures like this, made from snow or cheese or even chocolate, are nothing new. They're popular at festivals, and they tell us two important things about temporary art. First, we often see it outdoors instead of displayed in an art museum. Temporary art is often created in public places. In this case, it's a public street. And second, look closely at this picture. Do you see the crowd of people around the sculpture? Temporary art brings people together. In this next slide, you'll see an artist in Madrid, Spain. He's working on a copy of a famous painting, the Mona Lisa, right? But he's not working with paint. He's working with chalk. He's working outdoors in a public place. And as a result, people are coming to watch him work. What else do you notice? I see some money. There are coins on the street. That's right. Artists and other creative people need to make a living. Temporary art, outdoors and public places, brings people together because it's fun. It's interesting to watch the artist work, and people will pay for that. Of course, chalk is always a temporary medium, and rain and people's feet will damage this piece because it is outdoors. Now, not every artist wants to attract a crowd of people. And some artists like to work with materials they find at a particular location. The material affects the art itself. For example, artists can create beautiful patterns and designs using sand on a beach. The artist Jim Denovan works alone, and it usually takes him about seven hours to finish a piece. While he is working, he is constantly moving and making marks in the sand. Because of the ocean tides, his work will soon disappear. He is conscious of this, of course, but it doesn't seem to bother him. Like any temporary art, Denovan's work doesn't last forever.